Hi, we're at Matt's house today. He's building a little Sportster hot rod. He plans on coming out to the Buffalo Chip and uh, <laughs> kicking some ass. So tell us what you got going on here. Well, thanks for coming over, John. <laughs> oh, this oh, is uh, no problem, buddy. <laughs> this is a uh, 1200 Sportster originally. Um, right now, I'm in the process of doing some big motor work on it. We've got a uh, a big bore set going in it with some racing pistons and some head work. And the size of the pistons, what are they? Uh, 3875 is the piston size. So overall, what does that make the motor? It'll be about a 1474 when it's all put 14. together. And what kind of compression? Uh, 11 to 1 probably. 11 to 1. Yeah. And who did the heads on it? Uh, Hammer Performance out of Idaho. Uh, and um, you got a flow sheet on them, you know. Yep. yep. And um, you um, got some cams for it? Buy yeah. Some, build some? Uh, it actually Hammer Performance makes a a 600 crush cam, yeah, you're under the that they call it, so a 600 lift, um, and I'll probably, we'll, we'll run this for a while and then probably, probably run it up to a, a, a 175 rocker ratio or one, I think it's 1.725 rocker ratio. Is it going to start? Let's hope so. Oh, uh, you got any uh, compression releases in it or anything? No compression releases, I'm just hoping it starts, I might have to put a bigger battery in it, we'll have to see how she goes, but okay. hoping for the best. Can we get those lightweight ones that... You know, for that one in my double end or my blue bike, that's 780 cranking amps, only weighs four and a half pounds. Heard a lot of good things about them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the, a lot of other guys are putting in their bikes. So, yeah, they look tiny. They're they're incredible what they do. Yeah, yeah. So, anything done to the front end? Or just uh, I got up? some uh, some drag bars, and I actually bought a different clamp set up, and then. Can't tell it now, but I've got a relocation on the speedometer that sits just underneath my knee when I'm riding. Um, different headlight. Oh, yeah, that's cute. A little different. Just trying to make it, just mix it up a little different and make it. So I see over here you got the front wheel and the rear wheel. Yeah. Regular fenders on it? No front fender. No front fender. Uh, no. And then stock wheels at this point. Uh, I think you at some point in time lowered out the, the shocks on it, so right. it's real nice. Got a real nice stance. So and then I put that ignition in too. That you still got that in it. Excellent. Heck yeah, I got pro. I got a program with the laptop, so I got a. I've got a, a tune in it now. We'll just kind of have to see how it runs on the dyno, and hopefully I got that's, it close. That's a handy unit. They're really nice. The, it's the TwinTech TC88, and they're programmable. And yeah. I'll probably have to knock it down when I run the nitrous. So. Back the timing up a little bit, that's about it. Yep. Put a little colder plug in it, pull the gap down a little. Yep. We got some iridium plugs going in it, so that should yeah. hopefully I picked the right combo. Excellent. Well, I see you got your heads over here. And your are these the rocker arms you're gonna be putting in? Yeah, these are the stock ones now, which I'm gonna try running right away, but I'm hoping to buy a higher ratio up to try to get more power out of it a little later on. And a uh, clutch? What are you going to do in a clutch in it? Right now it's got a, I think it's a Barnett clutch, and it's probably not going to hold up. So we'll have to see how she does this year and see if it holds up at all. It's got an aftermarket spring in it. So it does better than stock, but I think with this level of power. You mean the diaphragm deal? <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yep, it's, it's all stock. Yep. Did, was that something I put in it? Or yeah, I think originally the guy before you put some stuff in it, and then, and then you, you put a... A different spring in it but it, it works pretty good so Excellent. hopefully it's hopefully it holds up for a little while anyway super and what kind of exhaust pipes uh right now i'm still in the process of buying some exhaust um but potentially run some vance and heinz competition or uh maybe some two brothers or I'm still kind of in the market trying to decide what i want at this point but i'll have to get that ordered pretty quick if i want to get this thing together and this how much works. nitrous in it i'll probably start with about 50 horse 50 yeah I got the crank welded up, I got the pin welded, and I've got Carrillo rods in it. Oh. Um, so I'm trying to bulletproof the bottom end. We'll have to see how its cases, cases hold up, but it should be a good combination. You got the thermal coating on the pistons, um, and then uh, I got some decent gap on the rings, trying to hopefully not blow them up with the nitrous, so. Okay. <clears throat> well, one thing about the nitrous, you know, with turbo motors now, they get so hot. Yep. The nitrous kind of cools it down so you don't have that expansion and you're not hitting the, um, the rings together. Yeah, a lot of people think that nitrous is really hard on stuff, but... No, it's a wash. It's, it burns slower. Yeah. And got, it, it's so much better than a turbo, from my point of view. Yep. You know? Keeps things a lot cooler. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I see you have a turbo hanging over here on the 
Workbench. You never know. I might just go on there someday. You know? Something some for the lawnmower? Yeah. <laughs> for the mini bike. I got the survey over there. For the, for the mini bike. For, okay. the, for the kids. For the kids. Well, we're looking at the uh, head gaskets for it. And are they something special? They're uh, multi layer steel, and you have to buy them obviously for the different size cylinders. So mm -hmm. you got to nip the. Uh, Nip the rivets off just to fit in there, so it's kind of. I know I, I used a set of these and I put that rubber o ring in there. Ah, oh, that didn't work. It hit the nitrous bloom right out. <laughs> the. So, uh, I ground my head so that that rivet fit. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, you can either you can either take some off the head or take the rivets off. They say you can cut them right off, but you got to keep them together. Yeah, it's kind of nice to make them fit the way they are, then they don't move around on me. This is actually my second set here. I have to adjust the, the base gasket to try to pull, to actually pull the cylinder up a little bit to increase the squish band where the piston gets close to the cylinder head. So right now I've got about 20,000 clearance in between, the, in between the cylinder head and where it meets the piston and I'm trying to get, you know, 30 to 38, so. I don't know, I'd leave it at 20. A little but, more uh, compression? Well, yeah, and uh, it's exactly right. And you can't get any crust up in there, you know, because you're not going to be having carbon. No, I'll clean it out. I'll clean it all good all the time. That's my, that's my goal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we're looking at your carburetor. What do you got for a carburetor? Uh, I'm going to try the HSR 48. Um, it's a pretty big carb, so we're going to see what it does. You can actually see the comparison between the stock one and the, the aftermarket one. Pretty significant so, size difference, so the air will slow down a little bit in this big one, but you're going to pick it up with the big cubic inches. That's right. That's right. Hopefully get my velocity back up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I am running through uh, a billet machined intake and it's, uh, it's a CNC machine and then it's got some little bit of hand porting done to it too. So. And you can run that into your ignition um, to retard the timing. You can yep. put, you know, when you hit the nitrous, you can retard the timing. You know 10 degrees or something i probably don't have to if i run into I, so much nitrous but i've just got mine set up like it's on nitrous all the time so if i was going to go without nitrous i'd have to go back and redo my timing yeah so that's kind of the debate right now whether i want to leave the timing down all the time or whether i want to run the timing up and then try to find a way to retard the timing if while you I can spray. if you can do it when you hit the nitrous that's kind of a nice deal because if you're going to ride the bike all the time or you know when she's out on the bike when you're not around and she's got it out riding around, it's kind of nice not to be beating on it all the time. Be nice. You she, know the women she, are. She'd beat on it pretty good. Oh, right? yeah. She, she totally. Hey, we got a new rider. <laughs> That's one of them. Watch out. There it is. Tell them how it's done. <laughs> Just to get a comparison on the on the piston size difference, this is the stock 1200 piston here. And here's, here's how it fits in the new cylinder. So you can actually see a little bit of size difference with that. So you did have to get new cylinders too. Yeah, so these are a cast iron Axtel oh, uh, cylinder. Right. So okay. they actually, they recommend running cast iron when you get up to 90 cubic inch because the case gets pretty weak. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, when you bore those, when you bore those, uh, those pockets open, the case gets so thin, you actually have to machine the bolts and stuff like, like, like Dustin like, did. Yeah, that bolt through here, it's only about, you know, 300 thousandths thick in the middle. much left of it. No. But we did his bike probably five or six years ago. He's got like over twenty thousand miles ago. Twenty thousand miles on the bike runs. You'll see. That's yeah. We'll see. We'll see. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So this is the nitrous bottle here. We've got a couple of brackets. I actually built these at my shop. Okay. So those will mount right up on the frame, and it's for all to see. I I kind of get a kick out of it. This is um. Uh, my son Dustin and Matt, they all went to school together. So they said, the kids are growing up, getting in trouble. I love it. <laughs> you never mentioned that this, you used to own this well, bike. Well, I used to own that one too. And you drove it around quite a bit. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a fun bike. Well, the late nights. I had uh, co-signed for a guy and uh, he got in trouble when the cops were chasing him around. And <laughs> so finally he says, ah, I got to get rid of that bike. So I ended up taking it from him and um, rode it for a while. Actually, I traded this bike for a trailer for my kids, <laughs> my daughter and them. A little bit of horse trade. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of horse trade going on here. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's cool. Well, anything else you want to lie about? No, not today. I think I'm all out of lies so, today. 
So where's that Superman jacket you wear when you ride your bike? Did you got that with you? Yeah, that's in the. I keep the, that in the trunk. So the bike. Bike. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> God dang it, that's fun. You got the what's the seat? Didn't I put a seat on it? It's got the. I think it's mostly stuck. Is it? Yeah. It's a sports. I don't know if it was the original seat or not. Actually, when. When uh, said guy bought this bike originally, I actually helped him hollow out the baffles on it and put some total steel rings in it back in the days. Yeah, it's, it's I, I remember uh, when he got it, um, he only rode it for uh, maybe a few weeks or so and the spokes got loose in it. Came loose. Yeah, and they wanted down at Harley, they wanted a bunch of money to uh, to redo the spokes in it. Threw them up. We go, what's the matter with you guys? So I got him a tool said here go around there cycle around and get it and learn how to do it so he learned how to tighten the spokes in it and are they all right when i should probably tighten them up now too i'll yeah. need to tighten them up for sure yeah, so yeah. go around i always wonder about the high horsepower with the spoke rear wheel i i um, had them and i would always tear the spokes up yeah i don't know what we'll to see if they actually hold up with this kind of power don't worry they'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> another shot What's yeah, this project here? Yeah. This is a 74 KZ 400 Kawasaki found in the barn. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're just kind of potting with it here and there. I'd like to kind of make a bobber out of it, just something to kind of cruise the cruise the city. Got to tell you a little story one time. I'm on my bike. I go up to a shop. His dad and them had a uh, place where you built drag bikes and cars, or not bikes, but cars, rails and stuff. Yep. And you guys travel around the country and. And on, you, what was that, a Yamaha you had? Suzuki. A Suzuki. Suzuki Intruder, 1500. So I go in the shop, hey guys, what's going on? Just swapping a couple of eyes, I walk by. They got the seal. They were sticking nitrous in this bike, kind of sneaking around. Oh, well, he tried to cover it up when you got in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't want everybody to know. It's hard to take people's money when everybody knows. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I thought, oh, you little turds, what are you up to? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and that bike ran pretty good. Yeah, I swear it was 60 horse, so it was 67 horsepower stock. Added another 60 horsepower. I surprised a couple guys. Yeah, yeah you come up to the bar there and you're dragging them Harleys out there. <laughs> but I think, I think a one kid beat you, didn't he? I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, I bet not. <laughs> I was remember I was, I was next to you and you were up, we hit it, and like you stayed kind of close. And then you just ran all the nitrous. <laughs> <laughs> and your it, earbox exploded. The, ear, the earbox did explode at least one time. I will admit that. Yeah, right. they glue it back together. There's plenty of nitrous for that thing. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. All right, well, well, anything else? Uh, how long until you think you'll have it together? Uh, I think I'll probably have it together in a month. In a month? Yep. So just you piece it together a little at a time. Yeah. Uh, I got your name for the race out at... Buffalo chip, so yeah, I heard there's gonna be some slow guys out there, so I'm yeah, hoping to beat up on them. Well, that's what we said. That's what we're inviting you. <laughs> <laughs> so someone to beat up on a little bit. Tell them to pack a lunch. That's what I say. <laughs> well, uh, when you come out, it'll be fun. It's uh, this year we should have the track a little bit better. They're gonna work a little harder on the track, so we'll see how that goes. But otherwise, we all are at the same place. We all race together, and it's a, it's more of a driver's deal. Yeah, you know, it isn't all the horsepower you got. You know, a lot of times when I'm out there, I get going. And then when I hit it wide open, I hit the 150, and then you just woo, back dang it, get a little loose. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I might have to hire hire a driver then, but the bike should be fast. Yeah. (laughs) Well, Dustin, you're looking for (laughs) horse? No, I think you'll do just fine. Well, thank you. I'll come back when you get together. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking a look. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well. Another day in the neighborhood.